And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us straight from 9th level games, creators of the upcoming Mazes, Fantasy Role-Playing Reforged, the one and only, don't confuse him with April, Chris O'Neill. How you doing today, man? I'm doing real good. I thought you were going to say, don't confuse me with the other Chris O'Neill. No, I no, I had to. Um, sometimes I have to go with the low-hanging fruit. Wow. Uh, the, uh, there, is, uh, there, there is another game designer named Chris O'Neill. We... Uh, from Brother Wise Games, they make uh, Boss Monster. Yeah, we from... share it. We don't share a spelling. Is it, a, it based on how you based on how you say that? I'm guessing. I'm guessing there. I'm guessing there's been confusion moments in the past. Oh yeah, sometimes people. Sometimes people are like, "Oh, I really like that game." It's like that's not that's not me. <laughs> uh. Uh, but my my primary focus has been on role playing games, so yeah. um, I've done some board games, but primarily done role playing games. Yeah. Um, so speaking of that, speaking of that, um, I like to open these things with the humble beginnings, in a sense. So, okay. walk me through your first introduction to role playing games, and what was it that made it stick? As a as a player or as a designer. Let's start. Let's start with this. Let's start with the former and and sli and slide into the latter. So I mean, I started playing role playing games. Uh, I'm going to date myself here. I started playing role playing games with the the uh, the Metzger Red Box. So um, I think I probably bought it in 1983. Uh, I bought it with money from my paper route. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, watching the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Um, you know, uh, my my first uh, my first dungeons were made on like construction paper. Uh, the uh, so so I've been playing uh role playing games as long as I've been doing anything else. Really, mm -hmm. I mean, um, one of the things that we've recently we did we're working we have a game in. in um, design right now that'll be out later this year called Rebel Scum. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically about Star Wars action figures. Um, and um, I realized in the process of that that like role playing for me grew right out of playing with action figures. It's 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 a similar thing. You you, you have a guy, you give him a story, um, you see where it goes. Um, Sometimes later, you're like, that was the best time. And it's like, what happened? You're like, I don't know. Uh, you know, which I feel like a lot of role-playing games is, you know, you spend five hours at the table, and at the end of it, you're like, oh, that was amazing. And you're like, what happened? You're like, I don't know. We uh, we fought some monsters. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and But, uh, you know, uh, because I started playing um, so early, both in the hobby and in my age, um, I got to um, live through a bunch of different waves of what was cool in role playing, um, and uh, even though I have made all kinds of games and played all kinds of games in a lot of different genres and pieces, at the end of the day, I I still love, you know. The sword and sorcery roots. Mm -hmm. The uh, let's get a torch and go down into the dungeon. Um, you know, kind of game. Mm -hmm. uh, um, as a designer, we started out um, trying to make a fantasy game back in the nineties, um, and we uh, we had gone to Origins with our prototype game and. Um, it was the year they announced that Wizards of the Coast had bought TSR. Um, so we just, like, threw everything away because um, we knew we weren't going to be able to compete. 
Um, and so we kind of changed our gears and um, we made Cobalt Date My Baby. So we mm -hmm. spent a bunch of time doing comedy, um, which was really good because um, nobody else was really in that space. Um, so it let us um, let us be uh, kind of free as, as designers in that, that space. And we, we did it for a really long time. And then when we... You know, we come into this modern era. I, I we'd spent a lot of time doing design. I'd spent a lot of time doing design work um, for what I wanted to play at my table. Mm -hmm. You know, wasn't really focused so much on what what's the product going to look like, and um, you know that ended up being really good. Um, and when the Zine Quest occurred on kickstarter it gave us the first real opportunity to be like let's see if people would be interested in this um and it turns out that people really you know like the things that are like what they like mm -hmm. <laughs> so um this has been um you know we we did two we did zine quest one we did zine quest two with uh mazes product and you know so now we're at, at like about two and a half years uh, of the game being out there we've developed kind of a base and uh you know right now we're 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 we're, we're doing pretty well uh what the next uh, evolution of this looks like so yeah now when it now with that kind of thing with that kind of thing in mind um i'd like you i'd like you to to go to go a bit into um a bit into some something that you had described ma you had described mazes as that I'm I'm kind of yeah. kind of curious about is your your um your descri your describe the whole notion of describing it as feels like 1979 play plays like 2021 this idea of of tr of trying to do trying to do old school style play, but not necessarily old school mechanics. Um, yeah. So so my question is twofold. One, do you consider mazes to be a retro clone? And what ex what exactly are you aiming for with that with that particular um, statement? Okay. Yeah. Well, so I I don't consider it a retro clone because it is nothing like, um you know, original, the the games from that time period. I mean, it, mechanically, it's extremely different. Um, but I do consider it an, an OSR game um, uh, in the fact that it is... Um, I, I think the most important thing about the idea of what we consider old-school gameplay is the idea of rulings over rules, mm -hmm. right? Um, I have enough of a framework that the the game master the maze controller in our in our coin um can make a decision at their table based on how they understand the rules um instead of being like go find sub book seven mm -hmm. paragraph 15 that's going to explain to me what i should do with this subsystem um now the that spirit um uh to me permeated that uh especially that late 70s so the second wave um of role playing design um you know so the first wave is just D&D &D and its immediate clones um but then there were people that were really expanding and you know trying new things and being like hey how do i you know how do i hack Dungeons and Dragons to be something different was the was the first wave, and then the second wave was how do I make these things better? How do I make them more consistent? Um, and that's really the where I my shining light is like it's where it's coming from me. Mm. Um, the you know so, uh, but the timing has more to do with the feel of the games than it does. Um, anything else. Um, one of the things that we talk about is, you know, the fiction, um, the fictional backdrop in which people were playing uh, 
role playing games. Uh, you know, it's actually really interesting. There's um, in the seventies, they they weren't always called games. It was just a lot of times called FRP, fantasy role playing, mm-hmm. and that's we, we've kind of it says mazes fantasy role playing for that reason. Like we don't very specifically. Uh, it, it was as much about that experience, the the less of a focus on the gamey part. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the the actual um, bed in which they were um, experiencing all this was one of fiction. Right, so we're talking, um, we're talking the, the paperback fiction of the '60s, uh, earlier pulp stuff. We're also talking about, um, you know, comic books in the '70s, like Savage Sword of Conan, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, some amazing runs on Thor. Um, uh, you know, it's really all coming together, and and also like the music. You know, like there was just this. Um, uh, there was this this fantasy underlying, and because of the success of Dungeons and Dragons, come the 1980s, um, fantasy was forever colored by the idea of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, up until that point, the stories were generally you know um, contained stories. Uh, it might be the loner, um, you know, up against the world, or you know the the the, the the barbarian nomad or whatever. Um, and then, you know, come the eighties, all of the novels were, you know, uh, a, a, a young boy meets a wizard. He levels up, he fights bad things at the end of it. You know, he's level 36 and he, he rules everything. Um, and so we were trying to like get before that idea fictionally, mm-hmm. um, and that's really where that 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 OSR that has far more to do with the setting um, than it has to do anything with mechanics. Um, now that being said, the two biggest comments that we've or, you know negative commentary that we've gotten about mazes, if you if you would, are people would like there to be more um, like kind of random uh, uh, randomness. There's mm-hmm. there's not a lot of randomness to the the gm um so we're going to add some of that you know optional stuff into the new into the new book um yeah uh, because if i'm not mis- if i'm not if I'm not mistaken um a previous incarnation of mazes was during the zine quest project and when doing when doing zines you don't exactly have a whole lot of ro- whole lot of um room to wiggle yeah, um, it, it, Mazes currently exists as a series of nine zines. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're not, you're, you're right, like, you, you don't have a whole lot of, uh, we were focused on, we just want to, we want to get the game in front of people, you know, we don't want to put a lot of options. Uh, so, you know, so, the, the, so there will be more options of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also going to be some rules that are really around the idea of, like, um, uh, that more like hex crawl kind of campaigny base, which to date everything in mazes has been uh, one shot focused, mm-hmm. um, which you know really is super not 1979. <laughs> That's definitely a 2021 thing. Um, everything was has been you know really focused. People really uh, a lot of people really do want to do uh, you know campaign focused games. Um, but one one of the design principles behind the polymorph system that's the underlying rules to mazes is that um, I can create compelling um, characters with some mechanical depth very easily so that I can do one shots um, because for a very large percentage I think of uh, indie gamers that's that that's the, their primary way of interacting with with most games. Mm-hmm. Now, with that with that kind of th- with that kind of thing in mind, um, the when it, I'd like to I'd like to pick your brain about the origins of the polymorph system. Now we we've we've already touched yeah. on the whole rulings not rules thing and. Old school, old school versus versus new school. But the 
appro the approach to that, but what I'm more interested in in this case is the li is the line of evolution when it came to this particular system. How did we get to this 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 set of the, the dice mechanic? Yes. Yeah. Um, so polymorph has a, I I think a, a very unique um, take on 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 rolling dice. Uh, uh, and and so the story of how we got there is kind of interesting. So um, so let me explain it for your listeners. Uh, the um, in polymorph, you're going. You have a die. You are you, you choose one specific die. You are either the D4, the D6, the D8, or the D10. Mm -hmm. And whenever you do anything in the game, you roll that die. So each one of those dice is assigned a roll. That that roll is what that die does mechanically. So if I'm the D8, uh, I'm considered the fighter, and my role is to you know do damage. Uh, when I'm doing actions in the game, I'm going to roll that die. Uh, and if I would like to do something that has to do in mazes, um, the the four primary outcomes are called boots or books, boots, blades, and bones. Mm -hmm. um, books is a you need to roll a two, two or a three, um, and uh, blades, for instance, is four, five, six, or seven. So when I roll my die, if I'm trying to do something that would have to do with my mind, that would be a books roll. I need to roll a two or a three, so. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm trying to attack something, I want to roll a four, a five, a six, or a seven. Um, whenever you roll a one, uh, we call that a key, and that is if this is something that your character concept could do, it succeeds. And then if you roll the top number on your die, what we call a crown, um, your action succeeds depending on the darkness of the world. So in other polymorph games, there are different ways for how this works, and it does different things. So, for instance, in our game, the excellence, whenever you roll a, a one, right, whenever you roll that key, it's your beast friend. So everyone has a, a best friend that's a little animal. They they step in to help you. Um, so I, uh, these are all dials that can be, um, that can be twisted. Hmm. But uh, because of this, each of the dice... We have you have a very clearly defined role in the group, uh, and it allows you to lean in to do the things that you want to do, and you are going to have much better success doing the things that you're good at, and you're going to have much better success if you even go further, which is I have edges that give me advantage on that role. So, mm -hmm. if I'm the D10, I'm I'm the best at rolling bones, um, and then if I have an edge like armored. Um, most of the time I'm going to have advantage when I'm uh, doing things. So I'm going to do even better, mm -hmm. which is the divine intention. Um, yep. But how we got there is actually really interesting because um, you have to go back like 10 years. And I was very deep on the idea of a, uh, a one shot game system that where, where you would like draft cards to create the character. Mm -hmm. um, so I was working with these things that were all of these card-based mechanics and at the time um, was working on a board game where we had decided we were going to use the uh, the polyhedrals uh, as the hit dice of the classic character classes mm-hmm the wizard was going to be a D4, and the thief was a D6, the fighter was a D10, the ranger was a D8, and the, the barbarian was a D12. Mm -hmm. um, and then processing and doing the math in there, started to realize that uh, I could combine um, a lot of that into a different frame. And for a while, we were working with a thing that was similar to, like, Savage Worlds, where it's, mm -hmm. like, a side of hedral to a ability yeah uh, uh and for a while we had that and then we had this uh we had this piece called um th this is this is the, pro the most pretentious thing i've ever thought of it was a uh uh there was a rising action curve that was based on the fibonacci sequence um 
where you would like roll dice and try to roll higher than the current uh, threat level on the Fibonacci scale, um, uh, which works perfectly fine. It's just really weird. Um, uh, you want to know something sad? As far as pretension goes, that's not even at the top of the. That's not even at the top of my list. <laughs> the, the, the Fibonacci, the, using the Fibonacci scale as your resolution matrix. Um, the uh, uh, so then all of those ideas sort of coalesce together, and one day, like at my whiteboard, I realized uh, how the math would work for for polymorph, um, and then. We, uh, after a bunch of playtesting, realized that the D12 was throw was skewing the math. Um, and so we took it out, and that's when it really all clicked into place. And it was just like, ah, uh, we have, we have a, we have a system here. Um, and then we decided to call it polymorph because one, we wanted to reference the polyhedrals, mm -hmm. uh, but the idea of like, you know, it's time to change your game, right? Yeah. Um, uh, because at the end of the day, the thing that this system does so well is it provides uh, a uh, it provides a mechanical backbone that's grokkable and understandable. Uh, it has enough because of advantage and all those things, and you know I can twist to this 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 you know am I the D four am I the D ten what am I doing you know for for the grognards to really appreciate but. For someone brand new, they can just pick it up and, and, and run. They don't need to understand why it works. Um, but it doesn't require any math. Um, there's no modifiers. Um, I don't need to compute anything. I instantly know yes or no. Um, mm -hmm. And and it's not it's not a simple, you know, it's not just completely random. There's 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 a lot of control, which is what I think most RPG players want some control, right? Like, they don't want it to just be random, so... Yeah. Um, the way you... So it was an interesting pathway mm -hmm. to get where we are. The way you describe it, it sounds like you guys had a kitchen sink at first, and then you just wh then you just whittled things off, including adding to adding to the abuse of the of the lonely D12 meme. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I love that D12. Uh, it, uh, Cutting the D12 was the hardest thing um, guessing there for me was a, personally. Guessing there was a lot of fighting in the office when it came to that? Well, you know, the nice thing is uh, this, this, all of the design of this game, uh, you know, has really been mine um, uh, up until we got Polymorph done. Right? Once Polymorph came out, a lot of other people's um, great hands have been in it, um, uh, but my my good friend uh, Curran Taylor, who is a designer that we're working with, their game uh, "Women Are Werewolves" will be out later this year. Um, they were an early play tester, and they loved the D12, and mm -hmm. they were very sad to see it go. Yeah, I um, I don't mean I don't mean the I don't mean the pick on the D12, but it's just be, it's just become one of those one of those running memes to the point where I actively considered do. Doing a doing a parody of the of those of of those adopt a, of those adopt a pet ads just just adopt a D twelve, you know just you know just get up get out the get out the sad music and say for for seven cents a day you too can save one of the, one of these poor neglected D twelves. For a D twelve, uh, you know, for a one, one to twelve cents a day. Yeah, you two could save a D twelve. Yeah, I, ju I just, I just, need to find the, r I just need to find the right actor or actress to do it because I couldn't pull that off. <laughs> I'm, t I'm, not to put too fine a point on it. I'm too much of an asshole. But, and in in my defense, when you're GMing, you kind of have to be. You know, if, you're, uh, if your players aren't paranoid of you, are you really doing your job? It's, it's always a good. It's always a good piece. They should be afraid. I, I agree. They should be afraid. But one now, um, when it comes to when it comes, given what given the framework that you're using, I'd imagine that it I'd imagine that it's pretty it's pretty um straight pretty straightforward pretty beer and pretzelsy when it comes to character creation. 
Yeah, character creation in mazes is is very easy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the so the first the first decision you have to make is what aspect uh, are you going to make, um, and so uh, in uh, the mazes hardcover that'll be coming out, there's five aspects. Um, uh, the, the aspects are things like uh, you know, are you the sword? And, and you're you're answering the question, how do I solve my problems? Mm-hmm. Um. I solve my problem with my Eldrith sorcery. Okay, well, your aspect is sorcery, right? And that's going to color everything about your character. And the next thing you have to choose is which of the four roles do you want to be? Do you want to be the Paragon, uh, the Vanguard, the Fighter, or the Sentinel? And that's going to determine what die you roll. Um, Depending on what aspect you've done, now you have to pick a character class, Mm -hmm. and there's a list of character classes. And each character class has three edges associate it with it so the first edge is uh always the same so if you uh if you choose the character class dangerous bravo Mm uh the first edge says the dangerous bravo is always well armed right so you have that and then you're going to choose between two different um the next question is a choice between two different pieces. So again, we'll stick with the the dangerous Bravo. Uh, it says, as a dangerous fighter, are you armored or sharp? Um, and then the last question is, do others call you hail, tough, or strong? So you're you're the you know how you solve the problems. What is it that you do? Um, what do others see in you? What kind of character are you? And then the last question is is just you know. What's your name? Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you look like? Because um, all equipment and all those kind of things, that's all... um, Abstracted? It's all abstracted. It's all all flavor, right? Like, so if you want to... If your attack is I shoot fireballs or I hit people with axes, um, you know, it doesn't matter because you're always just going to roll your die, right? (laughs) Um. So I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the uh, MMO City of Heroes? Oh, now now you're hit. Now you're hit. Now you're hitting the low hanging fruit on me. <laughs> like it's st- even even after all these ye- even after all these years, it still st- it still stings. Um, well, you, not- you can play it again. Yeah, it's. I know, and I've I have had I have had some is- I have had some issues, but um, there was but the other. The other thing that kind of stung was I was um I was I remember at one point in time Alderac was flirting with trying to do a um City of Heroes um role playing game. Yeah. Um and I still have the quick start for that. There was a quick start for it but nothing ever came of it. Yeah, cuz every, everything else everything else got weirded out around that. I I always loved City of Heroes. Um I still play it. Mhm. Uh, the uh, City of Heroes had a big influence on my view of how games work. Um, I can see that with the mix and match thing you me- you mentioned. Yeah, and the idea that just said like, um, so I have this power set. This power set is uh, ice, you know, uh, ice blasting. Mm-hmm. But I can change what it looks like, and then the fiction in my head is is oh, I'm shooting crystals or uh you know this is this is sleep powder or uh it doesn't matter because at the end of the day the attack is the attack the effect Mm -hmm. is the the fiction around it uh what's important right um like much earlier versions of the polymorph system was 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 real crunchy you know and it was more like a superhero game where it was like oh well uh, you know, you choose choose an effect, and it's like, oh, well, this is a fire effect or whatever. And we and what we realized was is we didn't need that level of. Um, not only did we not need that level of specificity, we also truly didn't want it because we found that that level of specificity disappeared at the table anyway. Yeah. Uh, now, with. What I do, what I do, fi- what I do find interesting ab- about the, about this particular setup, especially when you mentioned um, 
that you're that you got that you guys are t you guys are taking a are taking a very abstracted attitude with um with equipment use is in a weird way you're kind of going the complete opposite route of stuff like say torchbearer which want yeah. which wants you to track every every single little item that you have and i've seen i've seen some argue argue that you have to go with that with um old school play which is some which is um something i've never really f i've never really followed with i mean i don't get me wrong i love i love to i love torchbearer to death but um the but but a fantasy game doesn't necessitate being a survi a survival game yeah uh, you know torchbearer is a really good example of right? so so luke Luke and Thor and um, uh, the team that did Torchbearer, that that game grows out of them playing uh, BX, you know, uh, basic expert Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. and playing it rules is written, right? Like they went into the idea that said, "Hey, we're we are going to play this as close to the experience as we can," and and and. They came up with a lot of things that were really important, which is that the designers were really focused on on um, very specific resource management. That was really uh, the the sub game going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, Torchbearer is a love letter to that that survivalist um, story. It, it's about um, it's about coming up with creative solutions to deadly conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is very crunchy, but I mean, um, uh, that is never been how I've played. Um, the, the game that is, I think the closest in rules feel, um, uh, for me is the black hack. Um, which is a great, um, true OSR, you know, uh, true retro clone that just was like, you know, I'm going to make this as, as seamless as possible. I'm going to make this as, as, as rules light as possible. Get, um, get as much, uh, record keeping out of the way. Um, uh, because I, I, I do, I do agree. I think a lot of people, um, for a lot of people, the fun in uh, uh, role playing games, is I get to go on an imaginary shopping trip and I buy some imaginary stuff and I put it in my imaginary bag, mm -hmm. and then I get to hoard that stuff over time. Um, and if that's the game you want to play, there are plenty of games already. Um, I didn't think there was enough. I obviously, you know, mm -hmm. w where it was like, hey, this is. There's been some really amazing narrative focused um uh RPGs that have come out um especially in the last just few years um but none of them are really, you know, going down into the dungeon, right? Mm -hmm. So that that was really what drove mazes. Yeah. Now although I, as a bit of an aside, I I will I will note a small part of me wondered if going with a name like Mazes was a tongue-in-cheek jab at the at the at that god-awful mazes and monsters film it is it is not it's not a jab it is a it is a 100 percent um to the book by rona jaffe mazes and monsters um uh you know is uh it, it is saying it, on its sleeve that it knows what you know mazes knows what it is right it's uh, uh, it's not Dungeons and Dragons, but it sure feels like it. Um, uh, even though to that, like we did a, uh, we did a, a teaser. We, 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 we have a D make of mazes, mm -hmm. um, called monsters and mazes. Um, which is my imagined version of what this game would actually look like in 1979. All right. Now, as I as I understand it, the cur the current book that is being kickstarted is collecting the is collecting the um, zines into one, into one package. But throughout but throughout all throughout all of that, 
is it is it is it going to be do is it going to be just collecting those zines or are there going to be some some changes from these from the original zines to this particular incarnation yeah so uh about 50 percent of the hardcover will be collected and collated from the nine zines mm -hmm. uh 25 percent will be updates to information that's in those zines uh, and 25% will be all new content. And we're uh, all of the adventure content that's in the zines is not going to be in the book. Um, so uh, there's an adventure for every zine, um, like, a, like a module. And, um, we're, we're, we're not bringing all that. So um, there's going to be a bunch of content that's in the zines that um especially in the seasonal zines um that are not making it into the hardcover because i'm trying to keep the hardcover very specifically on this is us going down into the dungeon mm -hmm. so um we've introduced like a bunch of character classes that are for other kinds of things um uh you know like there's a wandering merfolk um character class that, that's not going to be in the in the hardcover hmm. um uh so for people that have the the zines um or even buy the zines uh right now um you know there is going to be some changes there's some there's some subtle changes to the rules hmm. a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are really getting not just play test content but play content you know and seeing how people actually run the game hmm. um so we are simplifying a couple of systems and we are um, adding a bunch of stuff that's really around this idea of what does a West Marches, Hex Crawl, uh, you know, campaign where I can swap characters in and out. What does that look like in this game? Um, cause, and that, that's also going to include things like, mm -hmm. like I said, like a random magic tables, like for, to figure out, like, uh, it, it's that fun that, some people feel is missing and and i see i sort of understand it and i'm kind of excited to write the tables um uh you know it's oh you 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 found a magic weapon well what is it what kind of weapon is it mm -hmm. um is it what kind of magic is it you know um of course of course since wizardry could get away with you could say that the met you could pro you could probably try and sneak it and say that the magic weapon is just a gun uh, you could, if you would like. Hey, if, um, if if wizardry and might and magic can get away with that twice, I don't see why not. If you would, uh, uh, if, if you wanted to play a guy with a gun uh, in uh, in mazes, no problem. Um, you could just say that you have a gun. <laughs> oh, plus let's not let's not forget that expedition to the barrier peaks is still a thing. Definitely, uh, it is definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. But in the now, all of the original, the original D and D guys, they didn't make a big distinction between fantasy and science fiction. No, the on, the only distinction is can we is can we cram it in here or not? <laughs> yeah, can I can um, I can I change this in? Yeah, and if 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 not if not how many times how many times do I need to kick it in order to make it fit? <laughs> yeah. Um, but in, in the, in the interim between, between that, between that wave of zines and now, what would you say have been some of the learning experiences, um, that you, that you've, that you've tried to, that you've tried to apply to this upcoming incarnation? You know, I think one of the biggest things that I've learned is just like listening to what, uh, what people wanted the game to do. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you, you, we've also gotten to watch other polymorph games do stuff. You get to see some of the things that they do really well. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it's been, for me, it's been, it's been humbling when someone takes my like framework documents and then they come back with a fully formed game um, that's telling a story or something I never would have thought of. Mm -hmm. Uh and it, it's it's amazing to see. Um, so there's a game that we put out, uh, Ninth Level puts out called Business Wizards. That mm -hmm. you know, it, I didn't write that game, right? So um, Nat and Pat, uh, 
Nat Mesnard and Pat Wilson that that uh, Watson that uh, that wrote that. Mm-hmm. Um, they uh, they 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 came at it from a totally different viewpoint. Um, that game uses the uh, a strengths uh, you know a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. It uses a mm-hmm. business tool as your framework device for running an adventure. Just just brilliant. It's just uh, uh, absolutely you know. Um, you know, so so a, a lot of that has is filtered back into the core mazes piece. Um, lots of little mechanics, mm. um, but the biggest learning really has been: you have to kill your darlings. It doesn't matter if you love it; if it's not being used, um, it needs to go. Mm-hmm. Um, because cutting everything until you can't cut anymore is definitely how you get the best game. It's always easy to add a system. Um, it is not uh, uh you know, if 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 we've done our job correctly, mm-hmm. uh, adding a system to do something specific shouldn't be necessary, because you should be able to evolve a ruling based on that activity, and you would come to the same conclusion if you were faced with a similar situation in the future. Meaning you don't need a system for it. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, some when you mentioned darlings, um, now one now an obvious one that I can think of in regard to that is the whole is the whole thing with um, the D, with the D twelve. But are there any are there any quote unquote darlings in particular that come that come to mind for you? In terms of things that you dis- that you realize you had to drop, had to murder. Mm-hmm. The D twelve is the biggest one, obviously. But um, yeah. So, um, the original version of the game had a uh, complete like advanced combat piece that was like pick a stance um, because mm-hmm. it's very easy. Like, oh, I'm going to take advantage uh, on my attack to, but disadvantage on my. Uh, damage i'm gonna like take a precise stance um Mm -hmm. and it actually works the the system works great um it's just not necessary um uh to codify a bunch of that um that was it that was an early one that got cut um we actually started out originally the original version of hazards had uh they had three markers, right? So it said this 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 monster has so many hearts. Mm-hmm. It it has so many stars, right? Which is like its own power source, and then it has a danger level. And what we realized is we already had a uh, we already had a resource for the 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 game master in darkness. Mm-hmm. Why were we? embedding an additional one inside the monsters um uh so taking that away then allowed us to say some monsters are just like hey i'm going to give you a darkness right and so we ended up with a much stronger system because we were willing to to cut away something that seemed really important which uh I'm trying to think about the things that I super loved that we had to murder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it is it's not it's sometimes it's not as easy as of a question as it may as it may sound. Um. When now, obvious obviously every book is someone's first. If you'll if you'll forgive me for stealing a line from Stan Lee and then paraphrasing it for this, um. So it so I do I do think that there's the possibility that some that somebody may be jumping onto this particular um 
book without being necessarily familiar with the with the with the uh, with the other um other zine other zine books so um I'm not going to have you go into exhaustive detail about each although exhaustive detail in zine is ki is kind of <laughs> is ki is kind of a mutually exclusive thing but I'd like you to go I'd like you to just give the primer on e on each entry when it comes to when it comes to those nine zines of the existing zines um yeah. so the existing scenes, the, the first four make up the, the core of the game. Mm -hmm. um, so the first book is called Sword, and it is the basic rules to the game. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's Sorcery, which besides also doing all of the magic system, is the character creation part. Um, book three is called Maze, and this is the rules for running a game. Book four is called Monster. Um, Monster is a bestiary and three complete uh, adventure modules that are ready to run. Um, so that makes up the core of the original game. And then there are five what we call the seasonal zines, um, which are spring, storm, summer, autumn, and winter. Mm -hmm. uh, and each one of books five through nine follows the same pattern. There is a... Um, there's like a framing uh, story. There's uh, the maze manual where we give you some new rules. Um, there's a new aspect at it. So, uh, for instance, in winter, the aspect is called Shadow and includes new classes like the Bitter Exorcist, mm -hmm. um, the Highway Brigand, the Reluctant Vampire, and my personal favorite, the Dire Rat. Um, I've really enjoyed playing a Dire Rat in games. Uh, uh, then there's uh, a, a section on a specific kind of magic. Um, there's a new adventure. There's a new. There's an adventure module in each one, um, and then uh, a, a bestiary for that uh, time of year, and then a little gazetteer with some information about the city of Harrogate. Mm -hmm. So that is how um, all of the nine existing books go together. Um, the the hardcover is going to follow a more traditional um, piece. There's, there's always a great question, which is, what is the purpose of your role playing book? Is it mm -hmm. supposed to be, is it supposed to teach you how to play the game, or is it supposed to be a reference for the game? Mm -hmm. um, and so we're teetering to figure out what the actual layout, the final layout. But I think the game, the book's going to be more focused on like. Um, mm -hmm. You know, two sides. Like, here's how you make characters. Um, here's how you run a game. Here's how you run a campaign. Um, and we're going to really kind of leverage uh, videos to really teach people how to play. Mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot, especially people that uh, are coming new mm -hmm. to the hobby, that is really where they're coming from. Which I I can cer I can certainly I can certainly see that and give, given what I do it's not like I'm one to it's not like I'm one to talk on that particular front. Um, but yeah, right. <laughs> now, um, you know, when, uh, uh, you know, Mildred. I don't know when you started playing, but like when I started playing, I had to teach myself. Like I didn't have any. Um, in, in in the early '80s, I didn't have any older older siblings, you know, or anything. So I had to learn from reading the books. Um, I had. I had my mentor, but he was only will he was only willing to teach me D and D, and he was not fond of the fact that I w that I was interested in branching out. Sure. Um, and gra granted, some of those branching outs that I that I did did not pan out as well as others. Um, riffs will eternally be my punching bag. Until I love <laughs> that, I like the setting of rifts. But try, trying to get the game to work to do what I want is an experience. Um, and I've uh, I've I've met I've mentioned that in the past. It's a case where I um I had I had a small book full of just house rules. <laughs> when it came when it came to rifts, you would definitely everyone has a small book. Mm -hmm. 
And I uh, I know I'm I know I'm not an isolated case on that on that it but um when but when when I started branching out it was def it was definitely a case of me of me having to having to self t having to self teach because a lot of the a lot of the games that I was talking about they obviously weren't going to be covered in Dungeon or Dragon um maybe you'd get maybe I'd get lucky and find an article in Inquest keyword here being if um I should note I started in the t in the um in the mid to late 90s Okay. Um, if you want to go with the if you want to go with year wise, my my version of D and D was the Black Books, um, which yeah. I got, which ironic I the fun the thing that it's that is ironic is the um the play the A D and D second player's handbook during the Black Book run, yep. um says this is not A D and D third edition, <laughs> yeah, and. That came out in '95, and of co of course, then five years later, we would get a full-on third edition. So it's just one of those poorly aged kind of things. The uh, I think that the uh, the 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 people coming into the hobby today have a distinct advantage in the fact that there is uh, media sources that can teach them all about the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's things like Discord servers. Like so for mazes, if anybody has any questions, they can just go to our Discord server and someone will answer that question. Yeah. Um uh, and, and it might not be somebody on my team. It could be, you know, just any one of the players that's active on the on the Discord. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, I do have I do have a bit I do have a bit of a question that I probably should have asked when we delved into character creation, but it just slipped by me in the moment. And that is how, and that is the nature of advancement, because with a lot of with a lot of games that are that go f that go for this that go for this level of simplicity, and whether and that's not that's not an OSR query. It's just a, it's just a matter of habit. Um, they tend they tend to be extremely fast and loose with uh, with the means of advancement. Yeah. Even even with the whole class creation, is there a, is there going to be a certain um, pa path when it comes to when it comes to advancing, whether that be through levels or something else? Yeah. So there's no um, uh, mazes as it stands in the zine form has mm -hmm. no actual advancement because again, it's designed to be primarily from a one shot perspective. Yeah, beer and pretzels. The, uh, but um, we will have a uh, set in the in the hardcover. So basically, the, the 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 decision that you have to make is if we're going to play a campaign, are we starting in the middle or are we starting at the beginning? Mm -hmm. And if you're starting at the beginning, you are only going to have two edges out of three, um, and then have a choice at the end of the game for adding another edge. Um, and then uh, you will have options to add additional edges mm -hmm. based on the number of games, uh, you know, the, the number of times we have seen this character. Um, uh, so, uh, like, a long-term character would have up to, like, five edges as opposed to... Mm -hmm. um, but to the advancement is all based on the number of edges that a player has. Um, one of my favorite advancing edges is called Veteran. Mm -hmm. Um and so in poly in mazes, when you uh, when you run out of hearts and stars, you can take a condition to refill them. Mm -hmm. And so the conditions are things like tired or stressed or hurt. Um, but the veteran edge says you have another condition called veteran because you've you, you've you've seen all this and you've done all this before. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually just spend you can you can take that condition. It doesn't have any negatives to it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and so it allows you to build up. Another one of the uh, another one of the levers that we're going to give players is uh, like basically deadliness, um, so that the MC can actually make a decision at the beginning of the game that says, you know, how deadly this this that we're going to play, and that's going to determine how many conditions you can take before you go down. So. Mm -hmm. 
um, right now it's uh, you have to take three conditions and then it's the fourth condition. Yeah. Um, it's uh, much deadlier uh, if you, after taking two conditions, is when you go down. So. Um. Speaking of that, I'd like to I'd like to ask something regard regarding combat. Now, yeah, certain ver certain versions of 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 old school D and D. Um, I'd say. I'd say BX is the mo is the most notorious for this, and that spirit was carried over with um, with Cro with a good chunk of Crawford's work. Is is um the is the squishiness of PCs, um. Like it, like I said, BX is is some is somewhat notorious for how, for how squishy encounters can can get can get in in its run, um. When it comes to encounters in ma in mazes, is there is there a similar level of squishiness, or is it somewhat lessened? Yeah. So, um, uh, all, all all characters are actually pretty uh, pretty good. The game isn't really designed to churn through them, right? We're not dealing uh, with not, Tomb of Horrors shit. Yeah, it's not DCC, you know, funnel type actions. Mm -hmm. The expectation is is all of the player characters are um, very good at what they do, and they've been around for a while, right? Yeah. Um, so we're going to create some opportunities to change that for people that want to play that experience. Because um, there are a lot of people that really like that, like, skin of the teeth. Like, mm -hmm. uh, only the strongest shall be my player character. Um, but um, the... You know, I I definitely come from a more new school piece, which I, I like the the fact that I have to be afraid that my character might die. Um, some of my favorite experiences in D and D was always the death of my characters. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but don't want to create a situation where you know I can't play the game. Right? I don't want to. I don't want to die randomly um, to a giant rat in the first room. Um, if if I get to the dragon at the end of the adventure and I die, that's that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of so. The way that um, mazes is built is that you, the player, are controlling the ability to take your conditions. So you are choosing how you slide to your inevitable death. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so it's definitely uh, it's definitely far more survivable than uh, than, than, than than BX. Uh, 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 it's definitely if you're gonna comp it's it's definitely more like you know five A. Uh, I was I was gonna say a bit more like Beck me, but okay. Yeah, BECMI, uh, which is where I started. That's my that's 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 my original. You know the the Metzger uh, the Metzger stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, a lot nicer to players. <laughs> in my in my in my experience, a lot of a lot of people who who I've had come on the show have have cited have cited Beck me as their um as their in, as their introduction, and I I know some people say that I should they should be pronouncing it with with the as B semi. B C M I, but as far as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, well, sure as hell ain't a goose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I still say at at. I don't say at at. So I'm with you. Um, but with uh, with all that in mind, um, what are you guys shooting for as far as a page count when it comes to mage when it comes to uh, mazes? I almost said mages for some reason. Uh, it is uh, about about 250 pages. That's mm -hmm. where we think it end up. So uh, I'm not going to be super hard. Um, uh, you know, we 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 haven't. Um, uh, we've gotten quotes for uh, a wide variety. Like we know where we're going to be in that thing. So mm -hmm. it's going to be, you know, 240 to 260 pages probably. So, mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm, I don't want to put any hard uh, hard pieces on because if I need to add more pages, I will. Um, I want the book to have as much uh, room inside to breathe. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, we're not going to... The zines are like chock-a-block, like, you know, just trying to jam everything in. Um, you know, because if you, if you run over a page, you have to add four pages. Yeah, and um, as some as somebody who had to who had to et, who had to do some layout work recently for a, for a side project, um, editing is pain. It is so it is so much pain. I'm su- I'm surprised I'm su- that that I wouldn't be surprised if Pinhead gets off on it. Okay, yeah, that editing made... <laughs> editing isn't for me. I have editors. Um. Oh. Believe me, believe me when I say you're better. You're better off that way. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I am not good at it. I, I. <laughs> Confession is the first step on the road to recovery. <laughs> but given that, given that, what would you, now? Obviously, the printed version is going to is going to take a, is going to have a few hurdles. Especially since you're going with hard, co- you're going with a hardcover option as well. Um, but what would you be shooting for when it comes to the release of the digital version, as far as as far as a release window? Not a date, just a general idea. Uh, we will release the PDF around uh, whenever after we uh, basically send it off to the printer. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, because you know we don't want any any lag time before that, so you know, at January or February of next year. So, mm-hmm. um, that, you know that 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 that's our goal. That's what we're shooting at. Um, so, uh, I mean, the good thing is is that the PDF, um, we, we, the PDF and the and the and the hardcover are going to be identical. So, um, we're also doing a roll twenty module mm-hmm. or a. Uh, Pendium, so that has to be a little different. Um, uh, so we're actually building um, the manuscript in a more uh, traditional text document first, um, mm-hmm. and and then you know the full layout. Um, so, um, but this will be the first time that Mazes is available as a PDF. So in order to keep that kind of 1970s feel we have uh, only had the zines There's, there hasn't been a digital version mm-hmm. now and I'll I'll certainly be keeping an eye out on how, on how it develops and as an as an aside I do want to give my congratulations on you guys getting funded in two hours <laughs> so that was definitely a little bit of a surprise for us um, no. not quite as big of a surprise as how well it's been doing since so uh this is our our biggest kickstarter to date so and we still have three weeks and i'll be like i said i'll be keeping a a close eye on how on how how the whole thing how the whole thing develops but with all of that said i do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness well, thank you. Thanks for inviting us, mm-hmm. and uh, this has been fun. And uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll we'll let you know when we get to the next the next uh, the next stage here. Mm-hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. I didn't lose you, did I? <laughs> I'm here. And of and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay. Fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>